This is Code.org. I'm currently working on their CS Discoveries course. I'm on Unit 3 Animation and Games Lesson 14, Project Interactive Card Part 7. Other conditionals. The surprise in your card comes from, a condi comes from conditionals that don't directly respond to user input, but to some other element of your card. This could be triggered by a variable that gets updated as the user interacts with your card, or a sprite movement into a certain part of the screen. Do this. For each of the remaining items on your interaction ta interactions table, add an if block or an else if block if you need a fallback action inside the draw loop. Add the appropriate boolean comparison block to the condition. And a boolean is a true false condition in code. That just means is it going to ask the computer if it's true or false, which is less than, greater than. And remember, it's two equal sign. Two equal sign checks if something is equal to each other. One equal sign makes a variable, so you always have to use two if you're checking a condition. Um, like if you're checking if score is equal to 10. Add the necessary actions inside the if block. Can you create a more sophisticated conditional by nesting or uh, by nesting them or using compound booleans? Ooh, tricky, tricky. All right, so let's see here. So what my surprise is going to be Add an if block or an if else block fallback inside the draw loop. Yep, add a boolean comparison. Yep, all right, just making sure. So for my surprise, I, hello. <laughs> um, I'm going to have one of their friends join them after three clicks or five clicks. So I need to add the sprite. Ooh, I also have this cloud here I didn't use, but that's okay. Let's have their friend. Ooh. Bear? Bear is a pretty solid choice. Mm -hmm. Yep, it needs to be the bear. So their friend the bear will be joining them if the user clicks three times. And what I'm going to do to have the bear join them is I'm actually going to use this big ice thing and turn it into the bear. So to do that, I'm going to, I need to know about this clicking. So we already have the when mouse pressed over dino, we change it. But I need a variable to keep track of how many times. So I'm going to take this and do var x. And I'm just going to name my variable count. And it's going to start at zero. Okay. Now, I'm going to use the counter pattern, which they talk about a lot, and I'm going to make count equal to, I'm going to go over to math, and I want to add one each time they press the mouse over dino. So it will change the background and all of that, but it's also going to add one to our count. So count will equal count plus one. So at first, count equals zero, but then I'll click, and count will then equal, well, it will say if... Dino, yes, true, he clicked over dino. Dark blue, gray, blah, 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 and then count was at zero. So zero plus one equals one. Count now equals one, and it runs through again. Then I click again, and it says, okay, well, count was equal to one, so one plus one equals two, and count equals two. So then I need a conditional to check. If, and I'm checking if count is greater than, and let's say three for testing, I'm going to sprite, nope, wrong one, set animation, and what do I want to do? I'm going to set ice animation to bear with fish, and our bear is going to be too big at first, I know that, let's see how this looks like, oh, that was way too fast, oh, if dino press count equals count plus one. We need it to just last a second. Hmm. Ah, uh, we won't went down. So... Not press, because then you can just hold it. I want to know if it... Ah, 
Oh, I got it actually. I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. So we will need a separate if, I guess. Because if mouse pressed over dino, yep, and then Yep, and so we're going to use this separate if to if count is greater than three. Okay, so I need another if. I need a control. I need an if. If, and this is where my count greater than three. I don't want to know if I'm holding it, because if the person's holding it, I don't care. But if they just pressed it, that's what I want to know. So if mouse went down in this if statement, right, if the mouse went down the left button went down anywhere so this is just going to be anywhere now we're going to add one to count let's see what this does once twice three times there we go and then it was greater okay so that's perfect so they're just clicking away and then boom, bear. All right, I just want to change this scale. Scale, oh, aha. <laughs> Ice dot scale, uh, let's say point, uh, 0 0.7, I'm gonna say. Oh. That was bigger. What was the original scale? 0.6. Got it. Let's try 5. I love this. Okay, let's try 4. So, if counts greater than 3, do that. And then, we should have... What was their challenge? Challenge, can you create more sophisticated by nesting them? Okay. So if it's greater than three, then I'm gonna check. Well, if it's greater than three, turn to the bear. But if, and we'll learn more about else statements, but if it wants to challenge us with nested, so if count, is greater than six, what animation should I do now? I know, I know, I knew. I want it to be the polar bear. Where's our polar bear? Hello. So if greater than six, so our code will check first if counts greater than three, and if so, it will turn it into this. It's then gonna check, well, wait a minute, is it greater than six? Because if it's greater than six, sprite set animation, and then we're going to say ice. If it's greater than six, we're going to change it to a polar bear. Run. <laughs> Boom. No, I like that. Cool. And now we have nested. And we could do this if greater than six and can you add more sophisticated by nesting them or using compound booleans? All right, so these are some of the compound booleans I believe that they're talking about. Not the equals, but and and. Oh, we can combine them. Okay, so let's do a compound one. If it's greater than six, I love a challenge. I'm going to get rid of this for a sec. Let's do a compound. So if count is greater than six and so now both of these things have to be true for the code inside to run. And I want to know mouse did move mouse X.
And let's say the mouse Y. So if it's greater than 6 and our mouse Y is less than... Ooh, I need a less than sign. I want it to be at the top. If our mouse Y is less than 200. So watch. Reset. One, two. There. Uh oh. Oh. It's now greater than six. I have to move my mouse up. Huh? And watch. I love it. So now we compounded them. So that's what I did. And I'll uh, post my code as well. But let's keep going.